Okay, I've gone back to uh, jelly be expressive jelly bean mode. Uh, one notch down, full saturation. Because it's lighter, therefore I need to make the colours darker. That's the, the idea or theory behind that. Whether it's true or not. I did some tentative experiments in the garden with a, a pot of coloured flowers or thing, you know, magenta, purple, yellow, and blue, uh, yeah, turquoise. So, uh, well, that will be, um, well, it looks quite exciting in the monody, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it, uh, maybe it just makes the ordinary extraordinary using the um, expressive jelly bean mode. It seems to get the colours right, and then put it that way, or you know, relative colour match, really. So, anyway, we've got something here, and this we, get, we can get so close to it that, you know, if there is any banata hanging on, it can't go very far away from the the spring head I would have thought, or away from where this coal phone is growing, so you might be able to catch a glimpse of it on the outside sort of thing, you know? A frond, which allows you to go further in to actually track back to wherever the original colony was, if there is one, you know? Sort of thing, that's my tentative thinking. And we've also got this again, which is growing at the, um, the wet wall site, so you know, if we find it here, we will definitely want to go back to the wet wall and vice versa, I would have thought. And that looks very interesting. So, we can get through the old xanthar here. I'll take the camera through here. Okay, special treat. Special. <laughs> oh, wow, this looks interesting. Maybe we come at the wrong time of year, but it looks interesting for, you know, later on. You can come back here next season. And uh, yeah, maybe on my next trip, I'll do this again with my next clip with uh, one off saturation with two notches down, but then we are in a dark location. Oh, oh, oh almost <laughs> falling backwards there. And uh, time to uh, readjust uh, my. my um... Oh, we got this thing, this, this strange root structure sort of thing, yes. Interesting. Oh. And looking up into the sunlight is all bleached out, is it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I do need to darken it. But uh, yeah, we've got some oryx there, but they're still not black stemmed, are they, like they were on the other side of the hill? Now we're going to start asking ourselves, what's on the other side of the hill? That makes the Oryx black stem. Oh, he, oh, 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 geez, that gave me a shock. I thought that was a, you know, a, a fork coming out there. I thought it was a, a green frond coming out there. I know it's just the coral fern coming out there, but I thought it was a, geez, now if you had a banana that size, it would be pretty impressive. But, you know, Darwin talks about one being 80, around about the 80 centimeter size which seems, seemed far-fetched until I actually saw one in someone's greenhouse back in 1992. And this is the story, the anecdote, is uh, it was sent to him by some lady in the southeast. I think I know who it is, but you know, by, there's not too many women who are into CBs, put it that way. And um, uh, who, who were there in 1992, sort of thing and uh, sent to him in a lump of soil. So therefore it was, again, like the old buggers, they were, they were growing things in natural wild soil, uh, not telling us they were doing that. And um, we were all trying to, you know, do the, I don't know how we got onto peat and sand. Everyone was, you know, everything was peat and sand, something else. Peat and sand, vicanite, peat and sand, and perlite. Peat and sand, vicanite, and perlite, and blah, 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 blah. And even I started recommending peat, sand, vermiculite and perlite in equal parts for Saracenia after doing some experiments. So, you know, <laughs> uh, do they actually grow in peat and sand in the wild? I mean, from all, all the photographs I see, you know, uh, the only one I would suggest in the Saracenia area that grows probably in pure peat is purpurea uh, through Canada way sort of thing, you know. But for all the other stuff uh, in the southern United States, I wouldn't call it true peat and sand, would you? From the photographs you see, uh, it doesn't look anything like the stuff you grow, you, know, you have in your pots sort of thing, so. 
And now and Mike is gas bagging away and everyone else in the corner of the is yelling, there's a banana in the corner of the screen, turn around, for bloody hell, just turn around and see it. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think I would have spotted it, fellas. You know, uh, a flash of red or something against all this green. You know. Though again, I haven't had all that, uh, that experience that the people over in the um, eastern states have. You know, they probably spot it, you know, instantly. Whereas, you know, it'd take me a few minutes to actually notice it if, if it were here, sort of thing. But uh, it's a nice little location, I'm assuming, if we get our map out. Oh, we've had this bit of gas bag and rant or something, which I'm renowned for. <laughs> um, don't worry, fellas, if we start growing things that aren't in peat, I think you'll be impressed. Because once you're out of peat, you're more scientific, you can actually work out what the problem is. And Okay, now, I'm assuming we're here at the first one, but we might not be. Um, so what it says is if I just keep walking here, we should come to a much larger one that's at least twice the size. Maybe we've already got onto this one without realising it. Because it does look like it goes down to the creek line, so I don't know. Hang on, closer. I'm going to be doing something on, online anyway, fellas. So, um, anyway, time to start a new clip and we'll try another jelly bean, um, whatever. What was I, say, I was saying I was going to do? Yeah, okay. <laughs> 